How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews back with uh, one of the Southern Swells up in his piece in form of their considerable cloudliness. Cl cloudiness. Cloudliness. Cloudlessness. Man, I suck at these. Um, yeah, anyway, this is a West Coast India Pale Ale. First foray into the Westies uh, for Southern Swells, at least. That's what I've been told, courtesy of my boy Carson. He's the one who sent us off. This is a... Can you read that? I'm curious if you guys can read what this beer is. I doubt you can, because I can barely read it. This is a 6.4% beer. Look at how... Get, I hate being that guy. I'm being that guy right now. Southern Swells. You need to find somebody else to print your labels. You need to do your labels. Like, you can't... That's illegible. Like, if I did, like... I do labels for a company for... A big company. And if I made a label that the lettering looked like that on it, I would get, like, not fined by my company. I would get in shit in trouble my company. But the company we would sell our products to would fine us for, be like, you can't send that. Like, that's hot garbage. That being said, the overall design of the label itself, I really like. Very simple, to the point, as far as the beer looks. Man, it's massive label reviews, apparently, was what we're doing right now. Soft haze, you know, soft. What's that look like? Pear juice? Pear juice mixed with ginger ale. Because that's a thing. Um, yeah, that's what it looks like. Pinky finger, creamy, infinitely fluffy head, off-white, with this soft little hazy kind of pale ale going on. 6.4%. That's good enough. Butterscotch. So there's a little bit of butterscotch vibes in here. So there's a little bit of off flavor, a little DMS, maybe even a little buttery, just in general, diacetyl kind of thing going on in here. I don't get a big kind of West Coast hot presence. I actually don't get much of a hot presence at all. I get a soft, semi-sweet maltiness, and a little bit of kind of, I don't even know if it's butter or di I'm probably leaning more diacetyl now, butter than just butterscotch, um, cream corny kind of vibes, but yeah, it's definitely in there, which is kind of a bummer, because I was I thought this would be a little bit cleaner, a little bit crispier, a little bit snappier. Let's see what the taste holds, though. Cheers. Yeah. I mean, that off flavor is still there. I'm leaning more like butterscotch now. But it's kind of saved a little bit by the fact that it's a West Coast leaning influence beer. So there's a richer malt than I had expected in here. A little Toro, a little crystal malt kind of vibes to it. Nothing too hefty, though. It's it's sweet, but not overly sweet. So it's appropriate for West Coast IPA. There's definitely a big piney uh, kind of characteristic. A little bit of resinous, a little bit of pineyness in the taste. Decent level of that, actually. It's not too small. And with how that, I'm assuming, is uh, dimethyl sulfide, DMS, is on the nose is readily apparent because those aromatics for those bittering hops with those uh, resinous hops don't really come through so it's way more apparent on the nose it's definitely a bit, uh, there in a taste um but it's clouded quite a bit because of how aggressive that pininess is that resinous is for this kind of west coast ipa this could be a really damn good beer i think there's a lot of good there's a lot of tasty fun components going into this it was canned 10 days ago, you know, essentially. But there is that, that I'm think saying is a DMS thing um, going on it. That doesn't ruin the beer. It doesn't make the beer horrible. I'm probably going to drink the whole thing because I'm curious to see how it changes. And plus it's this lower ABV, ABV beer in the way the beer presents itself in the taste. It doesn't hinder the beer all that much, but it's definitely without a doubt a little bit of kind of nefarious off flavor in this that just keeps this beer from being ultra fantastical because that's what makes West Coast IPA all that great. Um, all that greatness, I should say, is the cleanliness, cleanliness, and the snappiness, and apparently the burpiness of the beer is really what kind of elevates that beer, kind of puts it on its pedestal and just how it's made. And when you get a beer that kind of hangs its hat, even though this is a subtly hazy version of that, you can tell by it be having that subtle haze. It's not like centrifuge or dropped out completely. Mm. 
and you do get that little bit of off flavor, which when you're dealing with the diacetyls and DMSs in a the world, there is a mouth flavor change to it too, I believe. Half time, it comes off a little bit more flabbier, a little bit more softer, a little bit more oily. It kind of just defeats a little of that stuff that you really come to appreciate from these kind of styles of beer. Now listen, first foray into a West Coast beer per Carson. I'm not a bad, not a bad beer. I, I'm a, I could guess this being absolutely fantastic four or five days ago. Um, because that's how minimal it is. Or even on draft, it's absolutely delicious. But I think if I drink this can three weeks from now, it might be a little bit more of a hot mess. But it's also a first foray. First dip in uh, the toe, toe dipped in the water in this style, at least commercially. Um, I'm sure they brewed it several times on the side. I, uh, let's put it this way. I'm a big Southern Swells fan. I've really, really enjoyed drinking their progression. And by that, I mean, you know, Carson has pretty much fueled me with almost every single Southern Swells I've ever had. And while I did enjoy their beers from when they first started sending me off beer, when he first started sending me off beer, the way, what they throw down nowadays is just such, a, such fantastic beer. And to take that journey from there to here is quite fun. I kind of look forward to the journey now from this West Coast influenced beer to see what else they produce because they're too good of a brewery and too they're just too good at what they do. And obviously that comes through in the beer that they care about what they do in order for this to be the pinnacle of what they do with this West Coast influence stuff. So, yeah, unless Carson falls off a cliff and I never have any more Southern Swells, I'm sure I'll have better. There we go. Is this one of the better West Coast IPAs I've had as of late? No. Value and availability? No idea. Carson, let me know what's what and leave you with, if you like what we like this beer. If you like breweries trying to do good things. I say that when I mean it, and I mean it here, because I really enjoy what they do, and I can't wait to try their next iteration of this beer or another West Coast one. So there you go. Review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there, if you want to talk about it, Massive Beers, if you want to check me out through the social media stuff, Beer Massive, if you want to check me out through the whole podcasting thing, and hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully enjoying a little Southern Swells right now. Hope to see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>